everyone, it's Vosk. I'm here with Tails, and today we're gonna to be talking about Ethereum mining. And whether or not you're mining Ethereum with GPUs or ASICs, or that's actually an FPGA miner, this video is gonna break down everything you need to know with the hard fork, the issuance, reduction, profitability, and really how it's killed GPU mining profitability, but we're gonna jump all into that today. A little while since I covered Ethereum mining news, which you may remember this video, but it hasn't been too long since I covered GPU mining profitability, if you remember this video. And today's video is going to be all about the Ethereum hard fork, the issuance reduction, and how this, along with just the negative crypto prices, not exactly negative, but unfortunately kind of red crypto prices today, have really impacted GPU mining and ASIC mining, and subsequently also FPGA mining profitability. Before we dive headfirst into this video though, I do wanna apologize for having a bit of a lapse in my uploads. Fortunately, lost a family member, but you know, I don't wanna bore you guys with all the sappy stuff, but that's just kinda of where I've been dealing with all that, taking a step back and so forth. But I'm back in action now, so don't worry about that. If you missed me, which you probably didn't, but anyway, here I'm back again. Also, giving away some Ethereum, not me, just some furry donor out there, so drop your Ethereum address, on this video below in the comments section. And in seven days, check the wallets, check the blockchain, it'll be out there. So I've been saying this for a while, GPU mining profitability revolves around Ethereum, whether you like it or not, whether you don't mine it yourself. The reason you can mine other coins profitably is because so many people have their GPUs synced up to Ethereum and there's a lot of GPUs that need a home. And so with all that stuff in mind, on uh, February 28th, Ethereum hard forked. The main takeaway in this hard fork is that they reduced the block reward from three to two, and they didn't implement prog pow pow which is a algorithm that would aid GPU miners overall. Here's one of the main takeaways of this video, and I wanna hit it hard, I wanna hit it early. The Ethereum community wanted to reduce the block reward overall, you know, so it was voted on and decided because of price, okay? They believe they are overpaying for security of the network with proof of work. They're paying too much to miners. Okay, that's what it boils down to. They believe that they were paying too much Ethereum, which equates, you know, Ethereum and USD and fiat value and whatever, however you want to value that, too much for mining. Okay, they could, they could give out two Ethereum per block reward to keep the blockchain moving, and they don't think that it would really reduce their security. And overall, they're not wrong because there's really nowhere else to go. In a bull market, wouldn't be the case. But in a bear market, absolutely not really gonna be a big issue there. One of the main beliefs I'm seeing outside of the general mining community is that big mining farms mine a bunch of coin and then they dump a bunch of coin for USD, especially in this kind of market because you know holding, hodling, it's very risky. It's always risky, but it's insanely risky right now. Not financial advice, just doge dead. I'm just saying though. With all that in mind, ASIC miners, I don't care what anyone says, you can dispute me, we can argue, we can debate if you want, but ASIC miners are more prone to dumping their crypto. That's because ASIC miners are more likely to be found in big farms and big industrial scale farms with millions of, in dollar, millions of US dollars or whatever fiat investment backing them. Well, guess what? Those investors, they want dollars. They don't want your digital coin. They want to put some US dollars in or whatever you know fiat they're using and get more of that fiat dollar, et cetera, out. That's the way the business works. Whereas on the flip side, a GPU miner who has like, you know, one or two rigs in his house is more likely to hodl that coin. It's not a big deal to just chip off, you know, a couple bucks every month, to throw it towards your electric bill. But it is a big deal to be paying thousands, tens of thousands of dollars against your electric bill. Just saying. With all that aside, let's evaluate how Ethereum looks post fork. And then we're gonna look at the profitability. So as you can see, block time, okay? There was artificial difficulty inflation taking place in Ethereum, basically due to a bug in their code, which has been fixed with their hard fork. All this bug introduced was uh, less profitability for miners. As you can see right here, the block time after that fork dropped back down pretty much you know, where it's supposed to be, actually a little bit lower. Also in mind, the difficulty chart, okay? So a lot of difficulty, chart drop because mainly due to that bug being fixed. A lot of this is artificial difficulty. Okay, so if it's artificially inflated, it's not like miners are leaving or going anywhere else. You can see the hash rate is relatively the same. So now let's talk about profitability. Right now, you know, I'm gonna go through a couple calculators and you know give you my findings here. So we take 200 mega hash a second, which would be pretty equivalent to an ant miner E3. This is a little bit more power than it actually consumes 
or say like a standard 7x rx 570 you know more or less gpu mining rig this is with a standard electric cost of 11 cents which you know you could view as more or less standard us electric rate we got a pool fee of one percent and if you look at our profitability it's not good okay so over the course of the next month with this mining rig you would actually lose twenty dollars so if you're going to finish the month with negative twenty dollars you should if and you just wanted to get some ethereum okay so if you just wanted that 0.4778 ethereum you would have mined you should just buy into it okay you would save twenty dollars by just buying it as opposed to mining it you could also sell your gear it's the bottom of the bear market probably and you know you'd be getting rock bottom prices but you look at that you could say you get 500 bucks for that rig you know depending on what kind of cards on there that's just a really rough estimate you know most rx 570 like four gigabytes was still going for like 80 to 120 bucks on ebay just an example and with all that stuff in mind you could take that you could buy coin and you would not lose it when you're losing money buying in paying that electric bill again i don't want to sound so anti-minor but if you evaluate just off these basic facts i mean Kind of makes sense just to buy in. And please know, I more than understand the expense opportunity with a mining rig and expensing your electric. Okay, I, I get that from U.S. tax point of view. For all the ASIC guys watching the video, if we flip over here, this is a profitability calculator for the Ant Miner E3, 190 mega hash with 760 watts consumed. If we look over the course of the next month, this thing is supposed to pull a whopping $6.50. One cents. It's not too good, but keep in mind we're factoring this stuff at the bottom, probably, hopefully, maybe, of the bear market. If you've ever checked out What's Mine, which is, if you're a miner, you've probably seen this site. It has a bunch of algorithms in here. This isn't factoring Beam or uh, Grin, so I'll get to that at the end of the video. Talk about you know profitability on uh, the Kaku mining algorithm. But my point is just that if you run the numbers, you have a complete wash per their calculator mining Ethereum with seven RX 570s. That's not a good profit projection at all. And you look at the other coins, like I said, Ethereum profitability will drag everything down. If Ethereum is not profitable, people are going to go to other coins like Ethereum Classic. And then that profitability will subsequently drop. And, you know, the list goes on with every possible coin here, especially things that are getting hit harder and harder by other mining devices like FPGAs on Ravencoin. Yeah, that's kind of an ongoing issue, which kind of deserves a whole video in itself. Maybe you're a big Monero guy. You like kryptonite. Nice, cool mining algorithm, right? But, but where is where's Monero? Oh, there it is. It's down here. With your 7RX 570s, you would lose $1.63 mining that every day. Doesn't really seem like the right choice, but why is it so unprofitable? That's because there's ASIC miners out there that are mining it that you can't buy, you'll never get to buy until they're perceived to probably be worthless, and someone else is making a bunch of money mining that blockchain, and it's not you. So this video so far has been mainly focused on RX cards, which if you review basically the last several months have been not very profitable and have been getting zero breaks <laughs> as far as it's good fortune when it comes to mining and profitability. I haven't really touched on NVIDIA cards, which I'm going to touch on briefly here, which their situation is not as bad, but please understand that they will be dragged down by everything else, and that's just kind of the way the ecosystem works. There's not too many algorithms that NVIDIA can hide, and the RX cards won't you know, come and pollute it. Some of those examples would be things like Grin and Beam, where NVIDIA dominates heavily. In my last mining profitability video, I talked about how Grin and Beam are the most profitable coins. Unfortunately, their values have dropped some since then, so that profitability naturally has been decreased. But if we take the equivalent of basically 6x 1070 Ti's, they would be mining about $42, $43 a month after your electric cost, and that's with a standard electric value of uh, 10 cents there. I actually should have made 11 to have it more in line. Over here, mining beam, if you've got, again, about six 1070 TIs, you would be mining about $28 in profit after you pay your electric bill uh, with that rig. Again, you know, this isn't steak dinner kind of money, okay? It's absolutely not, but it is profitable. If we come over here and look at the, you know, Ethereum mining rig, which wouldn't be the exact same comparison because it's cheaper card and so forth. But over the next month, you're going to lose $20. So you're going to have to buy someone else a steak dinner. And, you know, kind of a cheaper steak probably. You're going to have to buy someone else a steak dinner. Whereas over here, I mean, you could eat, you know, maybe once, maybe have a couple burritos by yourself. No, no money for a relationship in this kind of bear market. 
But seriously, mining Beam and Grin still have some profitability, whereas Ethereum mining, you know, as it's kind of been for a while and definitely is now, it's not very profitable. Ultimately, guys, my stance kind of remains the same. If you're going to try solo mining some projects, if you have NVIDIA cards, you can make some pretty decent money, all things considered. If you want to just put your cards on something and, you know, get, you know, more or less, probably the best profitability you can in this market without as much work, uh, Grin and Beam, and these could also be better than the other projects you're putting more work in on, you know, the much bigger variables when you have smaller and smaller projects. But my point is that Grin and Beam are probably going to be your most profitable options for NVIDIA. For AMD, there's really not too many options. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm trying to sugarcoat it for you guys, but there's no good options right now. When something like ProgPal comes out, it could be much better for the space. Kicking all the ASICs off, for example, on Ethereum, would, in fact, make it a lot more profitable for all graphics cards. And although, this is bad news again, but those low RX cards are not very good on ProgPal compared to like some of the better NVIDIA cards, for example, uh, it's still better than where we're at right now. Also, keep in mind, you know, the price. If this card, you get a bunch of them for 80 bucks and you get a bunch of 1080 Ti's for 550, you got a lot more room there, uh, depending on your power costs. There's a lot of variables, as always. If you have a cheap power cost, you can afford to run more, less efficient cards, and you could quite possibly come out ahead of someone running fewer, more efficient, more expensive cards. As always, don't risk more than you can afford to lose. And also, as always, try to have some fun. I know it's a bear market. I know it's easy to get down, especially when you know go on coin market cap and it's just red, 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 red. But crypto is still a new emerging tech. It's exciting, and there's so many possibilities. And even if you're just getting into crypto today, you're still at the front of it. So as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you didn't view it as negative. It's not. I just try to bring it to you real as always and if things aren't looking good i'm the first guy to tell you things aren't looking good i don't disappear i just kind of come back with bad news <laughs> maybe that'll be the end of my channel one day i don't know but also uh before i get off this video i do want to say that if you do want ethereum to adopt prog pal which honestly i'm not really sure if they have i don't i don't honestly don't think they're going to do it just personally how I view their dev team and so forth. And honestly, I don't even know if they're competent enough to do it. I hate to you know, hate on the big dogs right here, the number number two, right? On coin market cap. But they're just uh they're just really unimpressive at every turn. That's just how I feel. But you know, again I'm being negative. So my point is just you can vote with your hash power if you want them to adopt Prog Pal. So hit the thumbs up on the video, leave a comment, let me know what you think about mining, theory mining, profitability. And above all, subscribe to the Voscoin YouTube channel. See you next time. Uh -huh.